It all started with a flat sheet of paper. No one knows how the ancient art of origami began. But centuries ago, in ancient Japan, they brought paper to life. How could they imagine that the paper crane and dragon would transform modern-day science and take flight in a new century? With roots in the 16th century, origami re-emerged in the 1950s as revolutionary Japanese artist Akira Yoshizawa inspired a new generation of not only artists, but also scientists. You had folks who took up origami as a hobby, but were also in the scientific world asking the questions that mathematicians and scientists do. How can I describe this concept mathematically? But also, the mathematical design techniques that you develop can be used for art and for technology. So people could turn right around and use those same techniques to design folding structures whose purpose was not aesthetic, but was functional. There's been literally centuries of work by these artists doing prototypes in a very cheap material of paper and discovered motions that we would not have discovered using traditional engineering approaches. Once they understood the mathematics behind the art, engineers could use origami designs and movements to solve problems. In engineering terms, origami is a compliant mechanism. So a compliant mechanism is a device that gets its motion from things like bending and deflection instead of hinges and bearings. Origami then by nature is compliant because all of those folding hinges are relying on the flexibility in the paper. Although many origami designs are hundreds of years old, engineers must adapt paper designs to more rigid and durable materials, using basic folds and abstract forms as inspiration. In some of the devices, it's harder to see the origami. For example, in one device, the origami helped us understand how to get the motion, but if you were to see the actual device, you wouldn't actually see much of the origami in it. It's, it's 3D printed out of titanium. Folding transformations from small to large, in particular, are very useful ideas, especially in space research. You have something that quite often needs to be big and very often needs to be flat or sheet-like. But the only way of getting it into space is to send it up in a rocket. And rockets have very limited space. And a nice thing with a lot of origami is you can make it very compact for launch. And as you get into space, you can deploy and be very large. I'm working on an origami-inspired deployable solar array for spacecraft. The spacecraft would be inside an, a rocket, like an Atlas V rocket, and the solar array would wrap around the outside of the spacecraft. Um, it would be all folded up compactly and then launched into space and deployed. By using origami principles, we can get a much larger array into space by stowing it compactly during launch and then opening it up once we're in space. Because mathematical formulas can be scaled to any size, origami-inspired designs are useful in many disciplines, including electronics and medicine. Based on kirigami, a variation of origami, utilized in pop-up books, this four micrometer thick nano-injector is a microscopic compliant mechanism. Developed for gene therapy, to deliver DNA to cells, 400 nano-injectors could fit onto a single one centimeter square computer chip. I think the biggest thing to learn from this kind of research is that you can find inspiration for designs from anything. If you're open to inspiration from any of these sources, then your creativity is, is not limited. It all started with a flat sheet of paper. Now, through origami-inspired design, it has been transformed, reimagined, elevated, but still reminiscent of an ancient art form. Origami, having deep roots, is an ancient art. You would think that as a field of exploration, it would have been played out long ago. But the opposite is true. It's as vibrant and growing as ever. As we look to the future, there are no limits on the horizon, either artistically or now in this new technological area in the applications of origami-inspired design.